If there is one natural disaster I don't think anybody watching this video would want to experience, it has to be a tsunami. As we saw in 2004 and again in 2011, the amount of destruction caused by these events is far too great. Coastal cities that sat for decades untouched get washed away with little notice. They are truly a terrifying force of nature. However, throughout history, there have been a few tsunami waves that are so big it's almost hard to comprehend. Waves that were as tall as skyscrapers and destroyed everything in their path. Tsunamis are typically caused by massive underwater earthquakes as they displace large amounts of water. Believe it or not though, there is another type of tsunami that has nothing to do with earthquakes or any other geological events. This is called a mega tsunami and it occurs when a large amount of water displacement is caused by a sudden addition of material into a body of water. Most of the time, these mega tsunamis occur because of a sudden landslide or the collapse of an iceberg. However, one event in world history not only produced a mega tsunami, but had an effect on the entire planet. 66 million years ago, an asteroid that was anywhere between 6.8 to 50.3 miles in diameter hit in the Yucatan Peninsula, leaving behind what is known as the Chicxulub Impact Crater. It was a massive asteroid strike that produced a mega tsunami that was over 100 meters high and unlike anything that has ever been seen since. It was so tall and moved so fast that some scientists believe that the wave washed as far inland as Chicago, Montana, or even Canada. But in this case, it wasn't the wave that did the most damage. An asteroid strike on this scale was enough to wipe out entire species of animals from the planet. Even striking the water was like striking land. Regardless though, it was enough to cause a massive environmental change all across the planet, bringing about the ice age and likely the end of the dinosaurs. Japan is one of the most geologically active spots on planet Earth. Located on the border of three tectonic plates and situated within the infamous Ring of Fire, the country is home to a number of active volcanoes. Among them is Mount Unzen, an active volcanic group of several overlapping stratovolcanoes near the city of Shimabara Nagasaki on the island of Kyushu, which is Japan's southernmost main island. It has been active as of 1990, when it awoke after a couple of hundred years. Then, in 1991, an eruption caused a pyroclastic flow that killed 43 people. However, the fiery mountain is most well known for the destruction it caused in 1792. That year, the area had been recording a number of earthquakes when, all of a sudden, one of the lava domes collapsed into the ocean, triggering a mega tsunami that took the lives of over 14,000 people and is still considered to be Japan's worst volcanic-related disaster. One thing that made this tsunami especially deadly was the fact that it struck the Higo province on the other side of the Ariake Bay. Then, it bounced back and hit Shimabara again. The wave was said to have reached a height of 330 feet, or 100 meters, making it capable of reaching miles inland and wiping out anything in its path. Out of all of the fatalities, around 5,000 are thought to have been from the landslide, around 5,000 from the tsunami going across the bay, and the remainder from when the tsunami returned. There are few geological events in recorded history that saw the destructive force as that of the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. It was the Earth's largest terrestrial landslide in historical times, a result of a restless volcano and its uniquely violent eruption. The most defining thing of this eruption was the total collapse of the northern slope, leading to an immense pyroclastic flow. However, something else came out of this collapse that was disastrous in its own right. When the side of the mountain fell, it plowed directly into Spirit Lake, which was a short distance from the base of the volcano. As the huge column of rock and dirt crashed into the lake, it produced a tsunami that measured 860 feet or 260 meters above the lake level. 
the lake also grew in size, nearly doubling from 1,300 acres to roughly 2,200 acres. Inland tsunamis like this are one of the rarest natural disasters on Earth. This massive wall of water traveled for quite a ways, knocking down trees and any structures that were in the way. However, even with 860 feet of water moving at an incredible rate, it would eventually be overtaken by the fiery cloud of ash that spewed out of the mountain. This mixture of water and ash created some of the most devastating mud flows, clogging rivers and leaving a disgusting sludge behind that would take months to solidify. Over time, Spirit Lake was able to fill back up and now has a level of around 3,406 feet that is constantly monitored and maintained. But it took over 20 years for the lake to get to the condition that it's currently in. As you can see by the disaster of Spirit Lake, inland tsunamis can spell certain doom for anyone unlucky enough to be in its path when it strikes. However, this wasn't the first inland tsunami to have been recorded. Just 17 years earlier in Italy, another inland tsunami did some serious damage in areas around a reservoir located about 100 kilometers north of Venice. Just after World War II, Italy decided to undertake a number of construction projects, including the building of Genoa's fateful Mirandi Bridge, which was a hydroelectric dam. However, prior to the dam's construction, there were numerous warnings issued that the mountain above it, Monte Toc, was unstable. As it was being built, locals reported continual tremors and landslides. However, the operators ignored the danger signs. They decided, as a safety measure, to lower the water level in the reservoir behind the dam. It was a mistake that would cost them dearly. On October 9, 1963, a massive landslide sent rocks, trees, and earth plummeting into the reservoir below. The impact sent a huge wave of water shooting 250 meters above the dam, just before sweeping down the valley below and destroying every village in its path. The tsunami displaced the air with a force that was supposedly more powerful than an atomic bomb. Witness accounts were hard to come by, though, since most of the people in the line of impact died, around 80% of them in a handful of villages along the valley floor. Some 350 families were wiped out altogether. Investigations later determined the landslide to be triggered by the lowering of the water level along with heavy rainfall. The immense weight of the water and earth could no longer be supported by the mountain. It is hard to imagine tsunamis that are as tall as some of the ones we've already mentioned. They're nearly as tall as football fields are long, if not even bigger. But that makes a person wonder, is it possible for a tsunami to reach into the thousands of feet? Exactly how much force would it take for something like this to happen? Few people believe that it is even possible. However, the largest tsunami ever recorded would definitely put that question to rest. It happened in 1958 at Latuya Bay, which is a quiet fjord in Alaska. On a calm and cool July night, a massive tremor struck the area and triggered around 30.6 million cubic meters of rock to fall 3,000 feet into the Gilbert Inlet, causing a torrent of displaced water to shoot skyward and form a monstrous wave. Now, when we say monstrous, we mean that the wave was 1,720 feet, or roughly 524 meters high. As it rushed through the fjord, it removed all of the trees and vegetation along the slopes. Millions of trees were uprooted and swept away by the wave. Miraculously, though, this wave only claimed five lives. This is simply because it is an extremely sparsely populated area. It proves just how deadly tsunamis can be when triggered by landslides. This particular landslide was extremely dangerous not only because of how much land actually broke free, but the height from which it did. There has never been anything to even come close since then. We have talked about how powerful tsunamis are plenty of times before, but now we have a scale to be able to see exactly how big they can become. Whether by earthquakes or landslides, they remain some of the deadliest forces on the planet. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another one just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. 
With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.